This is a fully custom 60% mechanical keyboard that I built for under $100 and it sounds like this. Here is a not an expert whatsoever review and my thoughts of the Red Dragon... Red... Dragon? Red Dragon? K530 Pro Draconic Wireless 60% Keyboard. If you saw my previous video review of the Keychron Q6, you probably can tell that I'm very new to the custom keyboard hobby. And in fact, I initially intended for this little thing to only be like a tinker toy when I kinda enjoy linear switches too much that I couldn't resist completely replacing my old keyboard. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I didn't really get this keyboard as something to replace my old setup, but rather an entry into customizing and modding a custom keyboard on a budget without risking damage something that's worth several hundred dollars if I were to make a mistake. Stake, and I think you should look at this keyboard in the same way as well. With that being said, let's start out by ripping into the packaging. I got the barebones kit because I wanted to use my own keycaps and switches. My box currently looks like a game of Overwatch was played inside this, so yours will not look like this if you get one. But when you first open one new, the keyboard will be inside this foam bag along with a sticker and instructions and a piece of foam on top and the sides elevated from the cardboard surfaces of the box. It's pretty minimal packaging, but this thing does not weigh too much, so it it shouldn't get damaged at all even with this packaging. It comes with a USB-C to C cable with a female C to male A adapter. It's super cheap and it's nothing special, but at least it's type C and not micro USB. It also comes with a basic switch and keycap puller. The switch puller is fine, but it could be better. The keycap puller I don't really like and getting this style would have been much nicer. The body is ABS plastic with a steel plate. It's very lightweight and it kind of shows how cheap it is, but it's sturdy enough. The PCB is clipped onto the plate with damping foam sandwiched in between them and there is sound damping foam on the bottom of the body as well. Not to be confused with dampening foam. Dampening or to dampen means to make something wet. Damping or to damp means reducing the amplitude of oscillation and in this case of sound waves. Anyway, the middle plate is screwed onto the body with a few screws. Double sided tape to the base is a 1600 mega amp hour battery with some foam on top. Stock the steel plate resonates a lot of sound and can get annoying without lube switches as you will see later in this video. It has flippy feet to adjust the height and it has this little thing on the bottom where you can keep the wireless dongle. This keyboard can be used wired or wirelessly through a 2.4GHz connection or by Bluetooth to two different devices. This PCB uses north facing switches and RGB. It's not ideal if you were thinking of putting cherry switches, but it also means backlit keycaps will actually work. The RGB is fine, like it's not anything special, but it has 18 RGB modes that you control with the function 2 key and some numbers. It has no software to adjust key layouts or lighting as far as I know, but I think that's fine for a keyboard of this price. Now let's get into the build. I built this after finishing up my main Keychron keyboard with tangerine switches, but I had bought almost everything for it before completing that board. I had barely any knowledge on how different switches would feel, so I kind of just made my decisions off stats on paper. So. At first I decided to go with the Cherry MX Blacks. On paper these are linear switches with 85 gram springs with a 60 gram actuation force. My new big dumb dingus brain thought the 60 gram actuation force meant the springs themselves were 60 grams which was a big misunderstanding. The blacks feel like this, you know, this finger exercise things for climbing and stuff. Since they are not looped, these sound and feel super crusty and every single spring resonates whenever you press down on any key or even just flick the board. The keycaps are Taihao Paradise PBT Double Shot Backlit keycaps. I got these on Mass Drop before they changed their name to Drop. I believe they were in the mid 20s or low 30s or something at the time, but don't quote me on that. They seem to have sold through for now, but any keycaps work as long as they're not Cherry Profile or any other profile that happen to interfere with north facing switches. Anyway, here's what they sound like stock with stock unlooped cherry mx black switches Pretty awful, right? But do you know what's not awful? Hitting that like and subscribe button. Wow, wasn't that so easy? 
It seems like a lot of new viewers watch my video reviewing the Keychrome keyboard. So if you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel and click that subscribe button to stay tuned in for future uploads. Anyway, let's get into the modding. The first mod I recommend anyone doing is the tape mod or the tempest mod. Basically you put two or three layers of tape on the bottom of your PCB and it makes the keyboard sound deeper and more dense. It is very cheap and easy to do and recommend using something easy to handle like painter's tape. Since this keyboard has a battery I would tape the PCB surrounding the battery with something non-conductive like electrical tape as I did. Also because this keyboard has switches on the left side, keep about a centimeter or two away from that edge of the PCB so the switches don't get stuck. Even after this, the board still sounded a bit hollow, so I decided to split the packaging foam in half and cut it into the shape of the sound damping foam. This theoretically fills up the board a little bit more, damping the sound. I put the entire thickness under the damping foam at first, but it ended up being way too thick and the PCB and middle plate started bending a bit. I also cut up the foam bag the board came in and cut holes in it to match the middle plate and added that between the damping foam and the middle plate. I did that to try to increase the clamping force of the PCB to the middle plate. Finally I put a bit of tape on the stabilizers to reduce rattling. I don't have lube or means to lube the switches and frankly I'm too lazy at the moment so that will be getting skipped for now. Alright let's put this thing back together and take a listen. Still pretty awful. It's super crusty sounding and you can hear the springs pinging even more now with every single keystroke. Since the MX Blacks are cringe, let's replace them with something a bit better in almost every single way. Gatoron Milky Yellow Cat V2 switches. These are linear switches that are lightly lubed from factory and have a 63 gram spring with a 50 gram actuation force. The Milky Yellow series are often regarded as some of the bust budget. Bust budget. Best budget linear switches in terms of feel and sound. And just like that, the switches are on and they look awesome. The milky housing diffuses the RGB really nicely and I just love that yellow as an accent. Anyway, keycaps back on and there you go, a budget, fully custom keyboard for well under $100. Typing on these for a bit, these feel a noticeable amount heavier and a bit squishier than the tangerine switches, even though the springs should be about the same weight. I also think they sound significantly thockier and deeper than the whole Keychron keyboard, which is a bit more poppy. These aren't as smooth as the tangerine but are definitely still super smooth and feel like typing on butter compared to Cherry MX Blacks which was like rubbing sandpaper together. The stabilizers feel a bit inconsistent and could definitely use some lubing or just replacing entirely. Like the space bar and turn the left shit feel left shit the left shift feel kind of mushy but the right shift and spacebar actually kind of bottom out properly and makes a clocky thocky sound. The spacebar also feels like it gets stuck halfway through the depression as well but it gets the job done. Before I get into the typing sound which will be at the very end of the video let's talk about the price for the whole thing. First with the board I got the bare bones kit and you can get one for around $45. You can get 70 switches for about $20 with a bit more in shipping but there aren't many places that have milky yellows in stock because they are pretty high in demand but I found these stock at the Thought King where I have bought all my switches from so far. We don't talk about the cherry blacks. I wouldn't recommend those. The keycaps are actually optional. These Taihao Paradise keycaps are not being sold at the moment, but there are plenty of great budget keycaps like this one that I had on my Keychron at one point for about $20. You should buy the fully built one to begin with though for anywhere from $5 to $15 more. It'll come with everything including an extra set of switches and keycaps, although I don't know how good those are. So in total, you will be spending anywhere from about $75 to $90 for a comp back 60% keyboard with core RGB, wireless connectivity, and feels and sounds great. But is this a good deal? I honestly don't know. 
First of all, the size. I'm personally not really a fan of the 60% layout. I always tend to reach for the arrow keys or the function keys when playing games or even just typing. I also avidly use the numpad to type numbers and especially using creative programs like Premiere Pro or Blender. There also seem to be numerous good bang for the buck keyboards like the EpoMaker TH80 Pro, which is a 75% keyboard with Gatoron Pro switches already installed if you get the fully built board. Even with 60 or 65% keyboards, there are options like the Keychron K6, which on paper and based on many reviews look much better in almost every way. Albeit I have not tried one at the time I'm making this video. But regardless if it's just confirmation bias or not, this keyboard has been a lot of fun to mess around with without really having to worry about damaging and losing hundreds of dollars. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I think you should get this if you are an absolute beginner like myself and want to have a relatively inexpensive entry point to experiment with modifying and customizing your own mechanical keyboard. With that being said, let's finally end this video with how this keyboard sounds with these switches and all the mods. This thing properly thox. I think. I still don't really know what that fully means. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in a keyboard that's not necessarily budget friendly, click the icon on the top right or the link in the description. Leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe. Don't die. See ya.